Welcome everyone to the Meds by Accelerator podcast brought to you by Everwell Marketing, the go-to resource so you can get the latest hacks and best practices to market and grow a profitable medical aesthetics practice. My name is Maripili and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing, operations, numbers, and helping you grow and take your med spa to the next level. This is the Med Spa Center Podcast, Season 2. Hey, how are you doing today? Great. That is awesome. I'm really excited to be back for another episode. And today we're going to be talking about how you can survive and prosper during the busy season. I think that this is a great time to start talking about how you can prepare for the upcoming months and get the most out of it. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I think um, what one of the things that we come across like all the time is that everybody last minute wants to plan so, an event for the holiday season. Two days before Black Friday. Two days before, yeah. <laughs> and actually, better said, they don't really plan at all. And so, and so the best thing that you can do right now is start thinking of everything so that you can set yourself up for success and that's what we're going to be talking about in today's episode yes we're going to go through what you need to plan and how to advertise and market strategically as well as how you can add some of these streamlined processes so you can get the most out of this season without all the added stress but first before we go into it Please make sure to follow us if you have not. If you've listening, if you've been listening to us for a while and you have not left us a review, we would love to hear that from you guys. We would love to read those. So make sure to check those out anywhere where you listen podcasts to. And if you're a video person like me, uh, then make sure to check out our YouTube channel. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, click that bell. <laughs> we'll see you all there. Yes. Okay. So what is the first? part of this process. The first part is actually having a plan. <laughs> <laughs> Easier said than done though. <laughs> so the first part is essentially making sure that you have a plan and knowing what you want to do. So I would say the first thing that you want to do when it comes to this is look at the previous year and figure out what exactly has worked and what hasn't. Yes, right? that is something, a step that is usually missed. Mm -hmm. Like people don't know exactly where to start. And I think this is a great starting point. Just look back, what did you, you get the most sales out of? What services were the most liked? Um, what are the sales that went the best, even if they were different parts of the year? Yeah. And just put them all together. Yeah, put them all together. And then I think that second to that, it's like you want to look towards measurable goals, right? And I think we've done several yes. episodes on goal setting and different things like that. It's like if, if you don't know the numbers in your business, if you don't know what it's going to take to help you get there, uh, then it's never going to happen, right? And we, mm -hmm. we I recall we did an episode on reverse engineering growth, and that was essentially what we we're talking about. You can't start that reverse engineering process if you don't have a goal in mind, right? Yes, and I love that you added the measurable part of it, and it's something that we keep talking about again and again. But it is very important for us to know exactly where we're going, because if you don't have exactly like a goal in mind that it's measurable, and I'm going to add there realistic as well, for sure. it's going to be really hard to know exactly where you're going and then add your staff into that. Mm -hmm. They also need to know where they're going mm -hmm. in order to get there. So what else do you think? I think the next part of it is, just as we say it, uh, planning way in advance. Mm -hmm. We're still in the beginning of September, which is great. And it is a great time to start thinking about your holidays. What would that look like? Especially right now when we know that big corporations, conglomerates, they're already planning 2023. Mm -hmm. They already passed this. So as small businesses, we do need to be ahead of the game and plan as much in advance as we can. It's not early to really start thinking about your Black Friday sales. Yeah. It's not early to start thinking about holidays. It's not early to start thinking even about the first quarter of next year. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I think and I, and I think one of the things that people don't know and then once it's too late, they end up struggling. Right. It's because most of these business, specifically when it comes to advertising, all these big corporations, they buy their media up front and they buy it in bulk, per se. And mm -hmm. so a lot of the times like you need to be planning in advance so that you can come in with the strategy that, you know, is going to be competitive and it's actually going to get you 
you know, some result during this time of the year, because at the end of the day, you're competing. People have a limited resource, right? They have limited cash flow and they're going to be one and they're going to want to spend it on multiple things. And so you need to then go ahead and start early and plan and know, okay, what is it? What can, how can I best position myself so I can attract that money, you know, towards me, right? Versus some other competitor, some other business, whatever it might be. Yes, another benefit about uh, planning way in advance and as early as possible is that if you are gonna be working with more people, so this is not just yourself planning it all out, but if you have a marketing company, if you have other vendors, if you are working with more staff members, Mm. you need the time to also give them so they can plan whatever they need to do or do whatever they need to do. Because if you are not giving them enough time, then that is when like all of the stress comes out in the last minute, things are not being done on time, you don't get enough time to do everything and stress. Yeah, and that's the thing like, and you wanna avoid that as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Like if you can avoid it, then you definitely should, right? Like nobody wants to be, you know, hey, like it's crunch time and then if you feel stressed out, well then guess what? Your whole, you know, team will be stressed out as well and they'll probably even be more stressed out than you because they know less of what's going on. And so it's just a recipe for disaster and you're not gonna get the best result that way. And so at the end of the day, the best thing you can do is like plan, (laughs) right? Yeah, that's why I'm saying it's not too early. Mm -hmm. Now, second to that, I'm gonna say, um, create a calendar and know your best times. Mm -hmm. So right now, sit down and start setting up that calendar for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. What would that look like? What events are you gonna plan? What promos are you gonna plan? When are you gonna be sending out what? Mm -hmm. This is going to be really key for, you know, just communicating with your staff and your vendors and your people. And now second to that is knowing your best time. What I mean with that is that as I w- as we were saying with big conglomerates, this is the time of year where like everybody is going to be wanting the attention of your clients at, <laughs> at all times. Mm-hmm. So it is better if you know when are the best times to start advertising. So it, like I said, it's not too early to start thinking about Black Friday, but we already know that People sometimes even plan their Black Fridays. I'm gonna go to this store and this store and I'm planning for my kids' um, gifts or family gifts and stuff. So let's say, what if you were to actually start planning this out a week or two before Black Friday? You're giving your ideal clients enough time and still an advantage of getting that money before they go and spend it elsewhere. Yeah, definitely. Like, I feel like with that point, like you become, or you become and you stay top of mind, right? Like as everybody starts planning, well, like if you don't tell them what it is that you're gonna be promoting or what services you're gonna have on offer, et cetera, then at the end of the day, you don't, you're not gonna fit into their plan, right? right. You know, it, cause a, a lot of people just end up saving money for this time, you know what I mean? For Black Friday, Cyber Monday, you know, whatever it might be and for mm-hmm. the holidays too. Or a lot of people buy obviously all the gifts and all the stuff they wanna do for Christmas, you know what I mean? Or, yes. you know, so yeah, like that's definitely, I think super important. And the more you plan ahead, the better off you're gonna be positioned to have the most success possible. A hundred percent, I love that. And um, getting ahead on the behind the scene tasks and how you can support your staff. Mm -hmm. So you, at this point, you're already planning, right? You're already knowing what's gonna happen when, if you're gonna have an event, if you're gonna have a special promotion, whatever that might look like. Now, second to that is how can you support your staff during this process? What do you need to communicate to them and what do they need from you? So that during this time, there's the less stress as possible. Because, I mean, I used to work in retail back in the day and there were times when it was so crazy, we didn't know what everybody was doing. Mm -hmm. And it was just like in the moment, like you just had to make like decisions, hoping that it was okay with the boss. And so honestly, that is not the way to go, right? You wanna make sure that you can almost look ahead and see what is it that might happen and give your staff some guidelines as to what they can and cannot do, where do they have the liberties and how should they approach any situation. Yeah, and like, and also kind of knowing like what their role is within Mm -hmm. Mm, yes. You know, the, the event or maybe what promotion or anything that's going on specifically, like anything special that you have going on that they know what their role is during 
that promotion or that event. Right. And I think a lot like the more clarity that you have towards this. And I feel like a lot of the times I know this happens to me. It's like, I'll say, I'll say it once to my team, but at the end of the day, they didn't fully really grasp that. You know what I mean? Like they'll say, oh yes, I get you. Or, you know, or something along those lines. But I know that I probably need to repeat it to them maybe three to seven times. And it's not until that number of times that they'll actually get a better sense of what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. And so don't don't take it for face value. I would definitely say like have printed out, have it written down, have it well documented and make sure that your staff reviews it several times or that you review it with them several times so that you can ensure that everybody's on the same page because we've seen this time and time again go sideways simply because the staff member didn't know, like one staff member, didn't know exactly what was going on. And like a good example is your front desk. Like we see it all the time where somebody calls, they say, hey, I saw this promotion on social media. And the front desk is like, what? Like, what promotion are they talking about? And then it's just like a total mess. And this is your first line of communication, right? If they drop the ball, yeah, you you just lost the sale right there. (laughs) And the trust of somebody too. It's like, wait, um, am I not seeing the right ad? Is it not the right right ad? Like, do they not have their stuff together? Like what's going on? Like, do I even want to go to this place? Like, and I lose trust in the organization, the business. So yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I love that. Now, the next step to this, aside from planning ahead, is how to advertise and market strategically. We did talk that it is the time when everybody is going to be advertising. So there's millions of dollars already in place for this upcoming time of year. So how can I, small business owner, actually make the most out of it? Yeah, I mean, I think that the biggest thing here is like knowing what your clientele wants Mm -hmm. from you. Right. So what is the most attractive service or product that you offer? Right. And I think just getting a better grasp of like, what is it that people want? Do they just want more of the same thing? Do they want something new? Do they want something already that is in line with uh, maybe their transformation package or whatever it is that they might be. Maybe it's more on, on the lines of memberships. Right. And so getting a better grasp. And I feel like a lot of the times you can. That's why in the first point we talked about, look to see what's been working in the past. Right. That'll give you some really good insight into, OK, this is like Botox is flying off the, you know, off the shelves, right? Or yeah. whatever. Okay, I already know people want this, so let's just sell more of it or let's sell something that's complementary to that, right? Or you can just straight up, if you can, ask your staff. I mean, I'm sorry, not ask your staff. Ask your clientele, what is it that they want, yeah. right? I actually, um, for my birthday, the- uh, you got me uh, those um, that skincare line I really wanted, mm-hmm. and so I was going through the checkout process because yes, I asked him exactly what I wanted, and uh, <laughs> when I finished that, they actually had a little survey already mm-hmm. asking me what I liked about them and what I would wanted what I wanted to see for their Black Friday sale. Yeah, and that's why it's, we're saying it, it's so important to plan. That's actually really great because something that you can start doing right now, like literally right now is start adding a survey at the checkout process within your practice, right? So you can already implement this survey Mm -hmm. asking them what is it that they're looking for so that you're planning September, October, and then you already have it ready to go November, December. Yeah, that's amazing. Like you can just simply ask like, well, we're planning our Black Friday already. Is there anything in particular that you're looking for that you or your friends would love to see? Definitely. As simple as that. And you you can also make it part of a conversation that your staff has with your potential people. The other thing when it comes to advertising is that since you already know people want, then what you want to do is plan an offer specifically around that. So like what Billy was saying, you know, all these big companies pre-buy all their media up front. And so the best way that you can stay competitive during this time of year is by having an offer that is extremely extremely attractive like irresistible you know because at the end of the day uh, because at the end of the day like i was saying like it's a marketplace right there's limited amount of resources maybe even more this year than it was last year right and you have to position yourself so that you can be competitive mm-hmm. okay and so com- competition means that you there's winners and there's losers right and you have to set you know you have to stack the odds in your favor yeah. so that you can win right and honestly i would say that this is super important because at the end of the day this time of year a lot of businesses 
make a ton of money and this is where they can stack cash so that they can survive for the next two months after that let's say january and february because we all know that usually those are not the best months because everybody already exhausted all their resources the months prior right right and so i think that's just going to be super important so you want to make sure that you want to that you have the best offer that you can put out there that obviously still protects your margins but it's still really attractive in a way so that you can bring in the people that you want to attract and you can maximize volume. I think the biggest yes. thing here is maxi maximize volume. It's okay maybe if your if your margin takes a little bit of a hit, but with the goal of instead of just closing one, I'm going to close 10, you know, yes. and then so on and so forth. So there's an exponential to that. Yeah. This is also a great time to not shout to the masses because everybody's going to be shouting to the masses. You want to really understand your ideal audience and almost like whisper to them, cater specifically to them. Mm -hmm. So if you know that your audience is mothers in between this and this age, then talk to them. Yeah. Right. I don't think this might not be the ideal time to bring in all of the new stuff. Mm -hmm. You can always package something and make it look really attractive, even if it is a thing that you've been selling again and again and again. And I think that's a big thing, because I feel like at the end of the day, if people like something, they're, they're going to want more of it. And so it's OK mm -hmm. to keep selling it again. And you can even sell it at bulk or you can do some kind of specials around that. Like I said, sell something that's complimentary, so on and so forth. Right. Yeah. Um, the second thing to that, I would say, is that you want to use your internal list strategically. And so I think internal lists, if you're not leveraging them already, yes. gosh, I mean, you definitely should. You're where a lot of businesses are leaving a lot of money on the table because they're not getting their they're not recommunicating to their patients to their existing patients and getting them to come back and buy more right you're trying to increase the lifetime value of that patient and so those are your loyal fans right those are the people mm -hmm. that at the end of the day they already experience your practice your business right and you want them to come back and buy more and so there's a ton of episodes that we've done talking about yes. how to use your list. So definitely check those out, but definitely include that as part of your strategy for this event. I would say that if anything, that is the most important part during this strategy for a small business. For sure. I mean, yes, of course, you want to still stay competitive in the advertising space and mm -hmm. still have some money going in there and still gather new clients. Yeah. The, the thing to the advertising so that everyone knows is that because I was saying that everybody buys in bulk, it means that advertising gets a lot more expensive. So that's why you want to have a very attractive offer so you can cut through the noise and yes. still leverage those marketing dollars effectively. But on the flip side to that, you know, leverage what you your the assets that you already have so you can get more money from those assets. And in this case, your list. It's kind of like you're you're punching from both sides, right? Sure. Like you want to make sure to keep consistent with your advertising. But at the same time, you already have this amazing list. Or if not, if you don't have it, this is a great time to get this going because you're gonna need those people at the end of the year when things are getting a lot more expensive. Definitely. So uh, one of the key things here is to sec start sectioning off your list talking about like, how can I talk directly to my audience? Is like, if you have several services that can cater to different people, just make sure to have those section off so that you can actually give an offer and do something for those people. No, that's super important. And then I think lastly, when it comes to this advertising piece is leveraging your community. So I th that is something that is so undervalued. So I'm no, glad 100%. you brought that up. And so I think one of the things, you know, one of the things that we talked about in one of our previous episodes is, creating partnerships with the other bis local businesses in your area, right? right? And so I think there's a, what, in November, there's like a, a time where it's like, support your local businesses. Uh, it's actually the Saturday after Black Friday. Yes, there you go. And so take that into consideration, right? One of the things that you can do is you can reach out to other businesses that are in similar to what you do, right? Like at the end of the day, maybe it's in regards to cosmetic, so you maybe want to reach out to other people that do something similar, obviously not the same thing. I would say like, as long as your audiences overlap, overlap yes, good that, is yeah. the, that is the key to this. And you can reach out to them and say, hey, I'm going to be running this super crazy promotion, right? During Black Friday, are you going to be doing anything? Because if you are, how about we cross promote each other? And I'll say that if they buy this package, they'll get a 10% off of your service and vice versa. And that way they'll, they'll go buy your stuff. They'll, and then your people will come buy my stuff. You yes. know what I mean? 
And so those are another way that you can do it. Obviously also put up banners, put up brochures in your office, go and put those same banners and brochures in other local businesses. We see this stuff all the time, like in coffee yes. shops or in you know other salons or different mm -hmm. things like that, where people are cross promoting. And we have a whole episode on strategic partnerships, but so go and listen to that because we actually do outline exactly what you can do with this. But that is huge, especially if you don't have a list yet or you're a brand new business, going into other businesses and having strategic partners is going to be huge for this time of year. Definitely. People also during this time of year want not only like a service or a product, but also entertainment. So if there is a way that you can make it where people actually go out with their family or do something or with their friends or whatever, you're gonna get more people into your business and you're giving them something to do and everybody likes that photo up as well. So <laughs> if you can somehow triangle all of those with different businesses in your community where your audience overlaps, I think you have it. We have a great win right there. So what's the last point for today's episode? So the last point for today is streamline processes. At the end of the day, this whole episode is how can you survive and prosper through this busy season? So definitely planning, advertising and marketing. But third to that is that streamline process. You want to um, streamline every internal process as much as you can to maximize efficiency. Mm -hmm. You want to get the most out of your money, your time, and your staff, mm -hmm. right? So you wanna make sure that everything is as linear as it can be. Whether that is bringing in a new client, the actual treatment, the follow-up process, everything that is in, inside your business, what can you automate? Mm -hmm. Do you already have a software that can automate things for you and your staff so you can get back some of that time? Yeah, and you don't have to deal with all this technical stuff the day of the event or the day that you're doing these promotions, it's already all in place and making sure, you know, it all works cohesively. Yes, exactly. So uh, not to do like a quick plug in here, but if you don't have a software like that, make sure to check out Patient Jump. It is our proprietary software that we have actually created and brought to life to make sure that it caters to you and your business. So I think some of the ways that you can create a lot more of a streamlined process, like easy wins are being able to schedule and book appointments online, like ensuring that there is an easy way for people to book appointments with your practice is going to be huge. So if you don't already have online booking or something along those lines, that's going to be a really easy and quick win that you can easily implement. And again, like art, there's a ton of softwares that does that. Our patient gem does it as well. And you can implement that really easily. And I think you also want to be very intentional about how you want to offer these appointments or these consultations. Right. And so you want to give as many options as possible. Like at the end of the day, you know, you can do an in-person consultation, but I think one of the things is specifically even during the holidays that people are traveling, maybe they really want your service or your promotion, mm -hmm. but they're just not in town, right? Like they're visiting their family or whatever it is. Hey, if they just want to call in and purchase over the phone, let them know that they can do that. Let them know that if they want to do a virtual consultation, that's an option as well. If they want to buy online, maybe they don't even have to call, right? You yeah. have a page that's dedicated to buying whatever promotion it is that you're offering online as well again patient gem can also facilitate that for for anybody really yeah and we've done that for our clients time and time again and it works and so those are just some easy ways that you can streamline and lower the barrier of resistance when it comes to people wanting to give you money okay yes and make it easy and accessible for them mm -hmm. again this is a busy time of year for everybody right yeah. so the easier and fastest and at most attractive ways that you can make your services, you're gonna win, mm -hmm. right? And also because people are busy, they forget. So sure. make sure that you always have that extra step of like, hey, I got you. You didn't get that gift for that somebody. Here's like a gift card and you can just buy it online. For sure, definitely. So pretty much guys, Think outside of the box, be as creative as possible, get inspir I mean, look and do some research, get inspiration from other businesses. There's a limit, there's a number of things that you can do when it comes to these promotions during the holidays. So definitely take the time, do the research, plan accordingly, create these processes and come up with a content promotion calendar, have your advertising plan in yes. place. And that's how you set yourself up for success. 
And don't forget to look in the past, see what worked, and make sure to gather those measurable goals because they're gonna be your North Star. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode, guys. Make sure that you stay tuned in because next uh, episode, we're actually gonna do a deep dive into how you can plan and strategize for your event. So you're not gonna wanna miss that. And uh, we're also gonna try to give you as much um, of a strategy that we can so that you can have the best event and promotions possible for the holidays. Oh yeah, I love that. So thank you so much. If you like this content and you wanna see a little bit more, you want more practical advice, make sure to check out our Facebook group. We have a great group over there where we're gonna be adding so many more features that you can use for your practice right now. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next time. Bye.